If you haven't watched part one, go watch it first. You can find it either down below or in the top right hand corner here. Alex Ferguson, many congratulations winning the Scottish Cup for the second year, but it was close. The luckiest team in the world. They were a disgrace of performance. Were you surprised by the way that Rangers Norman no McQuish won a cup for Aberdeen. No one no McQuish played Rangers themselves. They were a disgrace of performance. But I'm okay in winning cups, doesn't matter. Their standards have been set long ago and we're not going to accept that from any Aberdeen team. On the 6th of November 1986, a young manager from Aberdeen joined United as the club were desperately trying to find someone that can lead them back to the top. Straight away, Ferguson made significant changes to the youth system in an attempt to rebuild the not so great youth system at the time. In his first game, he lost 2-0 to Oxford, but it wasn't long before he picked up his first win as United boss in a 1-0 win against QPR. As time went on, results steadily improved and on Boxing Day, they managed to beat Liverpool 1-0 at Anfield, making it their one and only away win all season. Ferguson finished 11th in his first season, which wasn't bad, but huge, huge improvements needed to be made and they had to be made fast. The next summer, Sir Alex brought in players like Viv Anderson and Brian McClare in an attempt to strengthen the squad. And astonishingly, they managed to finish second in the 87-88 season, nine points behind eventual champions Liverpool. This made the fans and the players optimistic, or in modern language, delusion. This optimism was strengthened even more as the club re-signed Mark Hughes from Barcelona as well as Jim Lee and Lee Sharp and Paul Gascoigne. The season started alright and by February they were sitting in third. However, it all fell through and injuries tormented the squad. After managing to win only two of their last 11 games, they finished in 11th place once again. After this, Ferguson wanted to bounce back and he did this by signing Neil Webb, Mike Fallon, Gary Pallister, Danny Wallace and Paul Ince. However, a lot of these signings proved to be worthless as by November 1989, United sat in 17th place, just one point above the relegation zone. It got so bad that it got to the point that Ferguson's job was in big trouble. News articles began to spread like this one from 1989 that says, The time has come for Manchester United to sack Alex Ferguson. He's been in charge for more than a year and has spent £2 million on new players, yet the team is now even worse than the one he inherited from Ron Atkinson. United will never win anything while he's the manager. It came to a point where one game, just one game decided the fate of Ferguson's managerial career at Man United, and it was an FA Cup final against Crystal Palace. It was simple, if they won, Ferguson would keep his job, but if they lost, Ferguson would be sacked on the spot. Luckily for Fergie, Brian Robson managed to score a late equaliser to bring the game to a replay. This result pretty much saved Ferguson and kept him in his job. The club managed to pull it back slightly, finishing 13th at the end of the season. But little did Ferguson know that the next decade was going to be one off, if not the most successful decades ever for the club. In the early 90s, a group of six young talents began to form in the youth academy, going by the names of David Beckham, Paul Scholes, Ryan Giggs, Nicky Butt, Phil Neville and Gary Neville. These group of young talents became known as the class of 92 and were an essential in United's success over the next lot of years. But more about that later. At the start of the 90s, Ferguson began to turn the club's fortunes around and by making key signings like Peter Schmeichel and Dion Dublin. They finished 6th in the 1990-91 season and battled it out for the title in the 91-92 season. However, they lost at the Leeds after a poor end to the season. This brings us to 1992 where there's now a problem. A big problem. You see, English football was getting worse and worse. Hooliganism was rife, stadiums were a mess and clubs felt hard done by. In 1990, London Weekend Television met with the Big Five which consisted of Man United, Spurs, Arsenal, Everton and Liverpool and discussed breaking away from the traditional English league to form a completely brand new league. Why? Well, it's simple. However, those five clubs turned into 22 and in 1992, the Premier League was born. 
United started the season slow with Dion Dublin being ruled out in October. They were now lacking a proper forward to help them score more goals, so they decided to go for Leeds United striker Eric Cantona for a million pounds in early November. Cantona swiftly became a star player in the squad helping the team climb back up the table and after storming ahead going their final 10 games unbeaten, they lifted the title for the first time in 26 years. Although this was a great achievement, Ferguson knew that work could be done to make the squad even better. In the summer of 93, they signed Irish midfielder Roy Keane for a record-breaking 3.75 million. He, as well as Eric Cantona and Ryan Giggs, dominated the league. Three games in, they were top of the table and they kept that throughout the entire season, being 10 points ahead in October and 16 points ahead by the new year. This sheer dominance won them the title with ease, as well as the FA Cup to claim the first ever double. They were runners up to Blackburn in the 94-95 season, then won it the next two seasons to make it their fourth title in five years. During this time, Ferguson sold experienced players like Paul Ince and Mark Hughes, and instead of replacing them with big money signings, he trusted the youth players Nicky Butt, David Beckham, Gary Neville and Phil Neville. Oh yeah, and Cantona did that. The media pounced on Ferguson after refusing to make any big signings but Fergie knew that these lot of players were going to change the club forever. In the following years the club signed key players like Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, Teddy Sheringham, Andy Cole, Yap Stam and Dwight York whilst at the same time saying goodbye to players like Brian Robson, Eric Hansen, Gary Pallister, Brian McClare and Lee Sharp. This brings us to the 98-99 season otherwise known as one-off, if not the best season the club has ever had. During this time, many English clubs had achieved the double, otherwise known as the Premier League and the FA Cup, but no one got even close to reaching one of the greatest achievements known to man, the English treble, consisting of one Premier League, one Champions League and one FA Cup. The season started rather normal. Ferguson signed both Yap Stam and Dwight York in the summer to replace Brian McClare and Gary Pallister. Despite losing the charity shield to Arsenal in early August, they grabbed their first victory in game week three against Charlton Athletic. The first half of the season was rather slow and by the new year they sat fourth. However, they picked up form and went on a rampage, going unbeaten 20 games between December and May to claim yet another Premier League title. However, the job still wasn't finished. They began their FA Cup run with an easy win against Middlesbrough and despite going 1-0 down to Liverpool, they managed to score two last-minute goals to seal their spot in the next round against Chelsea. After going to a replay, United managed to edge it out in front to set up a semi-final tie against Arsenal. David Beckham's early strike opened the score, however, Arsenal levelled and it was forced to go into extra time. The game was at a standstill, but that was until, in the 109th minute, Ryan Giggs managed to slot home the winner to send United to Wembley to face Newcastle in the FA Cup final. This proved to be a fairly easy game as United came out on top thanks to goals from Sheringham and Scholes to gift United with yet another double. However, once again, the job still wasn't finished. They began the Champions League campaign by finishing second in a group which consisted of Bayern Munich, Barcelona and Bromby. They faced Inter in the first leg of the quarterfinals, beating them 2-0 at Old Trafford, then managing to grab a draw at the San Siro to take them to the semi-finals against other Italian giants Juventus. Now it's safe to say this team was stacked with talents, like Antonio Conte, Didier Deschamps, Edgar Davids and a young Zidane Zidane all managed under Carlos Anzalotti. They managed to scrape a draw at Old Trafford, however, this was a major disadvantage as they now needed to get a win in Turin against one of the greatest teams in the world at that time. And that was quickly realized as within just 11 minutes, United were down 2-0. It looked like their hopes were gone. But then, in the 24th minute, Roy Keane managed to reduce the deficit and slot a goal in, in the hope that this goal would bring more momentum to keep going. And sure enough, just 10 minutes later, Dwight York managed to level the score. However, this wave of momentum was quickly halted as Roy Keane was shown a yellow card, meaning he would be suspended if they were to make it to the final. That didn't stop him though as he kept fighting, making sure Juventus didn't score. Despite this, Juventus piled on the pressure, trying to find a winner. United were damaged even more as Paul Scholes got booked, meaning he would also be suspended if they reached the final. United were hanging on by a thread, 
but that was until in the 83rd minute Andy Cole did the impossible and scored the winner in Turin against one of the strongest Juventus sides ever see. They had done it. They had reached the final against German giants Bayern Munich in search to make history and crown themselves as the first English club to win the domestic treble. As United came out the Camp Nou, it was quickly made apparent that this Bayern Munich side was not going to be easy to beat. Within only six minutes, Bayern managed to score through a free kick and United's chances became small. Through the next 80 minutes, it followed the same pattern. Bayern piled on the pressure with chance after chance after chance. And although United had their fair share of chances, they couldn't follow through on them. But that was until in the 91st minute when Teddy Sheringham managed to score a last minute equaliser to send the game into extra time. Or that's what they thought. Just two minutes later, United went another corner. This was their chance to potentially win the game. Beckham curled the cross into the box. And what do you know, on the other side of that cross was a young Ollie Gunner Solskjaer. Solskjaer with the goal for Manchester United. They had done it. They were now the first English club to win the English treble, practically crowning themselves as one of, if not the greatest club in England. But the question was now. What was next? <laughs>